Next on the Broadway show, it's one for the ages. We're catching up with two of the Tony nominated stars of Kimberly Akimbo, Victoria Clark and Justin Cooley. And we'll hear from a whole lot more Tony nominees ahead of Broadway's biggest night. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is the Broadway show. It's the Broadway show, and we are back with another good one. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Thanks for being here. I like the way you make a point. I like your frame of mind. A little quick, a little sharp, a little beat behind. I Kimberly Akimbo is nominated for eight Tony Awards, including Best Musical and Lead Actress Victoria Clark. It's a story of a 16-year-old girl who has a rare and fictional rapid aging disease. Imagine teen angst while living in the body of a 70-year-old woman, while also dealing with a dysfunctional family. I sat down with the Tony-winning star of Kimberly Akimbo, Victoria Clark. Talk about this story. Did you say like, listen, I can't wait to get back to the stage or this story is a reason I want to go back to the stage? Really, the, it's the latter. I had been doing mostly directing and doing some writing. I know you've been writing as well and I have a lot to say right now in my life. And so it would take a really special show for me to go back on stage and feel like I can channel something that I myself would want to express. And this is the show is doing it to a T. So it's talking about how precious life is. And I'm approaching, you know, that age where every moment counts. And I could never have said it better than David Lindsay Abair and Janine Tesori. So I'm so fortunate to be able to use their words to say what's in my heart. I think everyone is kind of looking at life like that now. I think the past two years did it. I think as we, as you know, as we celebrate another birthday or dread another birthday, whichever way we go, we know that life is precious. And like, you know, you know, at some point we're, we're not going to be here and we want to appreciate every moment. Is that what this show does to you every night? Yes. I'm the oldest person in the cast. The people that play my parents, Bonnie Milligan plays my aunt, Stephen Boyer plays my father, Ali Mozzie plays my mom. They're all at least 20 years younger than I am. And then the kids in high school are, you know, a good 20 plus years younger than that group. So we're really a three generation cast. And so it, it's very touching for me to be in the room with them and to see them kind of grow up. And, um, you know, we all, they're teaching me so much. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. What is that like? Because you're, you know, you're aging, you're supposed to be, a, you're a teenager. And so what is that like that you're learning in real life, but also learning on the stage at the same time? You know, learning to have fun again. I mean, I, I think sometimes when we, when we grow into adulthood, we think, oh, you know, that that's, I should be more sophisticated like that. I shouldn't be so dorky. I shouldn't be so silly. And being around this cast has reminded me just how much fun life can be and how much fun live theater can be. Um, so it's really a joy to come to the theater and uh, we're really looking forward to telling the story to a wider, wider audience. It's super exciting and I think that when I see stories like this that come to Broadway that are different from what we were, you know, maybe grew up thinking about Broadway, what does that do for the community as a whole? Well, it's where we have to be, right? I mean, we, we, we've spent the last two years and many of us much longer than that re-examining what we want to say and how we want to say it. And this show is really breaking a lot of rules in terms of what musicals do. It's subversive and it's irreverent and it's um, hilarious and heartbreaking. It's all the things in one show. I mean, I just can't think of a show that has as many threads, emotional threads pulling through it as this. It's really complex. The major vibration, the major theme is, is, is the joy and the humor. Because I feel like you have so many different things going on. You've got the, the, the teen, you've got who you really are. I mean, that, that is all part of it. And then right. you've got the teen that, that is aging in a, in, a, you know, in a different way. So I feel like you've got three characters inputting all at the same time. Right, and it's a very interesting thing to play as an actor, because I don't think the audience thinks for one minute well, that's an actual teenager. <laughs> you know, like they, you're always, con I think. You're I, an adorable teenager. <laughs> well, and I like your candy necklace. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but you know, I think after a while, uh, I hope people forget mm -hmm. that it's an older actor. I, I hope that they start to really, to really believe the story, which is she has this disease, which make, is making her body age really fast. And it's like a roller coaster and she can't make it stop. And so I have to believe that too, or I can't get the audience to believe, to believe it. We also caught up with another of the Tony-nominated stars of Kimberly Akimbo, Justin Cooley. Let's send it out to Charlie Cooper. All right, 
it. We're walking you to work. Not only are you fresh on Broadway, but you are a Tony nominee. Like, I what know, the hell? I know. How do you get over it, or do you ever feel any sort of imposter syndrome? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, to be here so young and um, being recognized by so many people, it's, it's hard to believe, genuinely. Like, did I really do all of this in two years? Did I reach that level? Because I have to. When I got this job, I was not Tony nominee. <laughs> How could you not learn so much? Like yeah. working with Victoria Clark and Bonnie Milligan and all of our friends. It's so interesting because I feel like you embody the role of Seth like so perfectly, almost as though you're playing yourself. How, Thank I you. guess, close to Seth were you in high school? <laughs> I mean, he's really you, close to home. You just like substitute out like Lord of the Rings for anime and like anagrams for like memorizing all over a thousand Pokemon and like <laughs> and it's pretty much the same thing. That's so much. Um, no, I, I love, I really think he's like the best parts of me. Um, all of the wonder, all of the curiosity, all of the magic kind of unfiltered and being able to play a role like that because in high school a lot of kids struggle with that sort of thing. Like, I don't exactly want to be parading around right. my weirdness, but it's so nice to kind of live it again in a place where I do get to do that. Any dream roles that you're looking to play? Because obviously you're fresh, you're new, right. and the world is your oyster. The stage is your oyster. I get scared to admit them because they're like right down the street. Right. <laughs> Seymour and Little Shop. Ooh, okay. I gotta That's... make that stop sometime. Also in Hamilton, I'd love to play yes. Philip Lawrence. Yes. You know, I think that'd be a good track for me. There are so many. And then down the line, Chicago. I bet it'll still be open. Yeah. Billy Flynn. Look who I'd it is. Love to. Can I just interrupt you? Look who it is. Is that weird? Who's that? Does that ever get weird to see yourself like? It does. The it's doors? the weirdest when people see me. Oh, he's in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll be excited for you guys to see it. Okay. Oh my yeah. goodness. We get a picture. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Yay! Oh. All three. All three. <laughs> so there cool. we go. How nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> <you hear it? laughs> and I think now it's time to go to work. Now it's time to go to work. The time Let's is get gone. another one. Break Absolutely. a leg. Thank you so much. Thank you. Broadway's newest pop concert sensation is nominated for nine Tony Awards and Juliet, up for Best Musical and Best Costume Design. Here's Beth Stevens with another edition of Building Broadway. Thanks, Tamsin. Tony-winning costume designer Paloma Young offers an array of Shakespearean chic for Anne Juliet. I talked to her about the inspiration behind the pop musical. So this show takes Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet and just does this amazing blend with pop culture and you know musical icons. So tell me what you did in terms of research to mix these two elements. Well, because of the choreography, because of the language, and because of the music, we knew we were not gonna be doing just straight period clothes. You can't move in them. They don't follow the, the feeling of the show. We did want it to feel like anyone who has ever had any experience with a Shakespeare show would get something that they expected but in an unexpected way. So we've got some corsets, we've got some doublets, we've got some pumpkin hose, we've got uh, one cod piece, we've got some ruffs, but then- right, that's like the collar, right? Yeah, the Elizabethan. That's, yeah, the Elizabethan ruff. Um, we have a whisk, which is even more of the sort of Elizabethan style. But then each of those pieces gets mixed with contemporary streetwear, streetwear that feels very 90s and 2000s. The Max Martin era is also quite large. Right, because this is all the music of Max Martin, so you have these pop icons that you're getting to work with and play with. Right, it was a combination of building our capital C costume pieces from scratch and doing that within our 
sort of candy color palette, and then making them seem very old. Uh, we had some great breakdown artists on the show, uh, as if they had, we've had them for years and years. And so then, breakdown artists are people who are roughing up the costumes? Yeah, distressing. <laughs> And actually, some of these clothes are very difficult to break down because they're athletic wear. It's not meant to it's look meant to old. Last, right? It's meant to look <laughs> brand new as long as possible. So in some ways, like Nike and Adidas were the bane of my existence because they made their clothes too good. Well, that's something I think people don't even realize about costume design for Broadway. These people are moving, they're doing eight shows a week. These have to, no matter how much, how much you distress them, they have to be durable and tell, tell us a little bit about that aspect of it. This show, because it wants to look quite broken in, has been a, a really fun challenge to figure out how to make things that are hardy enough to be danced in full out eight times a week. And so there are a lot of tweaks. We want these costumes to look like they're being maintained by a scrappy troupe of actors. The concept of our design only improves the more that these costumes get repaired, break down and repaired. Here's a truly great and star-studded event. It's the WP Theater's 2023 Gala. Every year, the Women's Project celebrates the extraordinary achievements of female artists and industry leaders. At this year's gala, the WP Theater honored Academy Award winner Ariana DeBose with the Trailblazer Award. And Broadway League Chair and President of the John Gore Organization, Lauren Reed, was presented the Ceiling Breaker Award. Oh my gosh, I was so honored to be asked to be here tonight. This is so cool, Lauren Reed, and everything she's done and everything she continues to do. Couldn't be prouder, couldn't be more honored. Listen, it means everything. This organization has been around for 45 years and making sure that women have a seat, not just at the table, but at the head of the table. And I have a passion to do the same, and um, I'm happy to support them and feel great, blessed to be honored by them. It's incredible. It's not something I take lightly. Any opportunity to step out, to stand out, to speak out is always a wonderful opportunity to show up. So I'm happy to be here. This is a Broadway show. We're back in just a few. Betsy Wolfie. And the Tony goes to Betsy Wolfie. Arian Muriad. Um, Arian, Adrian, Orion, Oreo, Orion Cookie. I mean, like every version of it I've heard. Scene. When I was a kid, teachers used to say, Scene Hayes? And I would go, Have you not seen Sean Connery in any James Bond movie? How long do you have? Uran Wits, Urano Wits, Oran Wits. Just give up. In every possible way, berets, berails, berails. Barry Ellis, I've gotten Brazelin before. It's, it's like those letters aren't even in there. I don't need castanets. Mouth trumpet. I'm an incredible organizer and I would have an amazing career as somebody who comes in and sort of like fixes your messy office. My secret talent, if I told it, wouldn't be a secret. I can sing exactly like Shakira. Nope, I'm not gonna do it. I'm Tamsin Fidel, let's get back to it. Are you, are you saying that you're gonna start dressing up like a lady all the time? <laughs> Honey, all my life, my whole life I've been dressing up like a man. Remember the show Transparent from a few years back on Amazon Prime? The story of a dysfunctional family and how their lives change when they find out their dad is a trans woman. Now, Transparent has been made into a brand new musical. Paul's here with the story. That's right, Tamsin. Transparent is coming to the stage featuring a true trailblazer. RuPaul's Drag Race favorite, Peppermint, will return to the boards when the new musical starts performances at the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles this month. We met up at the Star Child rooftop at the Civilian to find out more. Peppermint, so good to see you. Oh my gosh, I am so happy to be here at this table with you. 
Ah, you know, I first met you five years ago. You were on Broadway. Five years ago, you were you made your Broadway like debut. Five Head over heels. Years. Five years. I mean, a whole pandemic happened. Yeah, yeah, that took us some time. <laughs> we were a little busy, or not. <laughs> Transparent is a groundbreaking show, and you are a groundbreaking performer. This is a perfect match. So when Head Over Heels opened, you were the first openly trans actress to originate a leading role in, in a broad, um, Broadway musical. Did I get it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I want to make space for Justin Vivian Bond, who performed on Broadway as Kiki. Absolutely. Which was such a wonderful show. It was a groundbreaking moment yeah. and a history-making moment for, for a few different reasons, primarily because it was the, my first opportunity to be on Broadway. Yeah, and it's and, just your Broadway debut. And it's just my Broadway debut. Theater kid. Was, yeah. <laughs> and I'm a theater kid and I went to music theater school. And yeah. so it, it all it was really full circle. Yeah. At that point you had just finished Drag Race and you were the first trans contestant on Drag Race. First out trans contestant first to trans. enter the workroom. We it's yes. so specific these days, you know? And I was out when I auditioned for the yes. show, which I think is different than some other people's experiences. Yeah. And there's a lot of um titles to to your career, you know? It's, oh it's my like God. A, the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so since then, you've seen so many people follow in your footsteps. Just in the last, you know, in the last few years, El Morgan Lee, uh, Jelka Ross in Chicago, you started something. I mean, it feels like this new wave of progressiveness, but it also, you know, it's interesting because of the times that we're in, how we're seeing a bit of a pushback in, in many areas, yeah. mostly legislatively in the country. It warms my heart to be able to see these other trans performers on Broadway and in professional theater. I wanna hear about your new family. I wanna hear about the Transparent family. What is this group like? You've been involved with the show for a while. Tell mm -hmm. me about this, this group I of mean, people. I mean, working with Tina Landau is amazing. Oh, she, yes, I, I, I have to admit, I do consider myself a theater kid, but like, I didn't really know much about her. And I, every single conversation that I have with her, um, I learned obviously something wonderful and brilliant and new to yeah. me. I'm feeling so good about the material and the creative team. It's Joy and Faith Soloway who uh, are, uh, created the original TV series. Yeah. And Faith is an amazing songwriter. Joey's an amazing writer. I knew that they both created the show. Yeah. But you know, the musical element is the is the what's new sure. uh, for this body of work and this story. I'm assuming that this is the sort of um, the kind of work you want to be doing, very meaningful, intentional work. Absolutely. I mean, I, I go back and forth. There's times yeah. where I'm like, honey, just please put me in a pumpkin and a ball gown and, <laughs> and let me twirl and throw some glitter. Tell me when to throw the glitter. I think this is work that just needs to be done. I think it's important that we have projects and art to help change the hearts and minds of people. And so that's why I'm really excited about this show. Hi, I'm Senza Lamani and I play Princess Jasmine in the North American Tour of Aladdin. We'll be in Kansas City May 30th to June 4th and you're watching The Friday Show. Welcome back to The Broadway Show. I'm correspondent Perry Sook. Every good Broadway play or musical begins with its book and you can find them all plus anything else vaguely related to theater here at the Drama Bookshop. Let's head inside and catch up with one of the stewards of the scripts. We are in a cozy corner of the Drama Bookshop with one of the assistant managers here, Mark Eugene Garcia. Mark, thanks so much for the time. Oh, thanks. I'm so happy to be here. What what a beautiful place to work. I mean, with the books all over the place, it, it's just kind of magical. What, what does it feel like coming here day to day? It's, it's amazing because you are always surrounded by the greats. Like people come in looking for specific monologues or maybe a specific workplace to kind of get into their theater mode. There's always some inspiration mm -hmm. on the shelf, no matter what, no matter what you're in here for, whether it's acting or writing or any form of stagecraft, there's an answer on our shelves. It really is remarkable. And then you even have fun things I see like right over here, booze over Broadway. You oh know, my things gosh. Yes. Just tangentially related, but but still magical and still part of the Broadway experience. Yeah, it's a community. It, it really is. Those who appreciate theater, those who do theater, those who create theater, it's all one big community that you can't have one without the other. And so we want to celebrate all of that. Now, uh, a as a writer, I, I would ask you your favorite book here, but I but I think it might be a. It might be I, might, I might have a, I might have a little uh, key into what that would be. Would you tell exactly. us a little about your play? I'm here not going to not going to not take an opportunity to showcase my show is coming up. Uh, Eight Tales of Pedro. It's uh, my first 
first published play. I have another one coming out later, but this is super exciting to have this here. Um, it is a story of uh, Latine folk tales, but also a conversation on immigration. It was nice for me because one of my favorite parts of this is watching writers come in and see their work on our shelves <laughs> and see their stories being told here because it's exciting, it's exciting to see your work there. I've seen people come in and cry when they've seen their plays. I've seen people jump up and down. So it's very exciting to see those connections happen here and to be part of that. I love it. It's your chance to help us celebrate the best and brightest stars of Broadway. The nominees are in and voting is now underway for the Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards. The only major theatrical prize awarded exclusively by the votes of you, the fans. Cast your votes right now at Broadway.com. And that's going to do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.